Hello Scouts, it's Mr. Kugler and I love apples and today we're going to do another dish uh, that may sound almost familiar to you uh, but this is a little different twist on it. So we've all heard of pineapple upside down cake. It's a favorite probably more with your parents and grandparents than Scouts. Although many of us and Scouts included enjoy pineapple upside down cake too but we're going to do a little different take where instead of using pineapples we're going to use apples today and get rid of the pine portion of it. So it's going to start off very simply with a stick of butter melted in the bottom of our Dutch oven. We're going to add a cup of packed brown sugar uh, in addition to our butter and we're going to let that come together, molt, molten together and become a nice melted gooey mess in the bottom of our Dutch oven and then we're going to put apple slices instead of pineapple slices. And not unlike what you would do in a pineapple upside down cake, we're going to substitute what normally be water in a regular yellow cake mix. We're going to substitute it with apple cider. And we'll use apple cider instead of the uh, water inside the cake. Now we'll use eggs uh, just like a normal cake mix and then we'll assemble it all together. And one of the things that helps identify a pineapple upside down cake uh, visually is the maraschino cherries that are in the center of the pineapple circles. And since we're going to be using an apple core and coring out our apples, our apple slices are going to look just like pineapples slices and we're going to add these maraschino cherries so you'll trick everybody out thinking it's pineapple upside down cake when really it's apple upside down cake. So we'll get going, we'll uh, start prepping and uh, preparing for our delicious pineapple, excuse me, apple upside down cake. So one of the important things to do is to get your charcoal chimney going if you're going to be using charcoal briquettes. I have mine off to the side, not because I don't want to show it, just because it creates havoc uh, with the camera trying to zoom in and focus on the smoke instead of on what we're doing here. So uh, charcoal briquettes are off to the side. Uh, in the charcoal chimney uh, coming up to uh, the perfect amount of char on the corner so we can use those and have those ready to go on our 12 inch regular Dutch oven. So as I alluded to earlier we're going to be using a yellow cake mix and we're simply going to follow the directions of adding uh, the three eggs, a half a cup of vegetable oil, but the one noticeable difference is we're going to use a cup of apple cider instead of a cup of water. So why don't we get started with that got three eggs here. Get these right into our mixing bowl. So with our three eggs in the bowl, we're just going to use our whisk and break up those yolks a little bit. With the yolks incorporated, into the egg whites, we're going to now add a half a cup of vegetable oil. Now in a Nalgene bottle, I measured out one cup of fresh apple cider. Now I'll give a quick mix of all three wet ingredients with the whisk. We're going to just take a yellow box cake mix. We're going to take the packet, just make sure there are no clumps. If there are some clumps in there, break them down a little bit. It'll help with mixing this cake batter in. And use a knife to open this bag. Uh, the one thing I can assure you is that if you try doing it by pulling the bag apart, cake mix is going to go everywhere. So what our cake mix added to the wet ingredients, we'll whisk it together to try to get a nice smooth and even uh, mix of the batter. So now that our cake batter is all mixed together nice and evenly with no lumps or clumps within it, uh, we'll set it aside and we will get our Dutch oven going uh, with some preheating. And that preheating is gonna help us melt that butter and combine it with that brown sugar. So our charcoal briquettes are ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up the Dutch oven 
the, with the appropriate amount of coals, both below and on top, that we'll use for baking. And we'll use it to help preheat the oven and also to help melt that butter and combine it with the brown sugar. So I'll start with the top and I want to do a ring of charcoal around the top edge. I want to make sure all my charcoal briquettes have a little bit of white on the fringe on the perimeter there. That way I know that they've ignited and they'll continue to burn and I'll get the most heat out of those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and add a ring of charcoal on the bottom. The diameter of the ring of the charcoal is just even with the outside perimeter edge of the bottom of the Dutch oven. And without counting, I know I have the right proportion. I have 10 charcoal briquettes here, and that's normally what I would use for baking on the bottom of a 12-inch regular Dutch oven. So I'll place my Dutch oven on top of the coals. We'll let that start preheating up. And while that's doing that, we'll take our lid stand, put it to the side here, take our lid lifter, take, put our lid off. My Dutch oven is nicely clean and oiled. And I'm gonna take our butter and get that stick of butter in there, get it starting to melt. By breaking up the butter a little bit with your paring knife, it'll help it melt faster than if you just put the whole stick of butter inside uh, your Dutch oven. So with our butter in the bottom of the Dutch oven, I'll put the lid back on. We'll let that butter start melting and we'll come over and we'll prepare our apples. So let's get to preparing our apples. You notice that I have some nice big baking apples. I understand in all different parts of, the, uh, of where we all come from, different apple varieties may be more prevalent. This is a honey crisp, it's a larger honey crisp. And what I was looking for was that bigger diameter to try to mimic that diameter of a piece of pineapple. So we'll start simply by peeling our apples. I'll use this coring tool as a way to get the core out of the center of the apple. I'll make sure that my angle was right. When we cut the slices, I may have to remove some seeds. No big deal, uh, but I'll try to get it perfectly down to center and hopefully I'll get the majority of the core out of this apple. And from the looks of it, looks like I was pretty darn close. Now I'll get the second apple and get the core out of that. I could see a little bit of apple uh, seeds in the inside of this one, so I'll just come in and use that core. And now I have it nice and clean on the inside. So while we're cooking, I'm just going to take a quick look at my Dutch oven, see how my butter's melting up. And my butter is melted, so I'm going to add this packed brown sugar. And using the spatula, be careful not to burn it. Taken now and added my brown sugar and incorporated that in with the butter. So now with my apples, I want to take and using a chopping knife, take my apples and come and make some nice slices. I want them to be about the thickness that a pineapple circle would be, and that's typically around three eighths of an inch. My first cut here has still some of the skin on it so we'll use that for something different now i'm going to come in and look to cut some nice even 3 8 circles and as you can see that does look an awful lot like a pineapple circle so 
So I am confident that I have more than enough circles of apple cut from my apple upside down cake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that remaining apple and I'm going to take and I give, give it a nice fine chop and we'll add it to the cake mix. So Scouts, with something like this that has that molten stick of butter and the brown sugar in the bottom or any other kind of cake ingredient or ingredient that's going in your Dutch oven that's more liquid, you're going to want to make sure your Dutch oven is level. And that brown sugar and butter goodness in the bottom there acts as a perfect leveling device where I can see as it levels out whether or not my thickness is even from one side of the Dutch oven or to the other side. And what I did is I just moved my wagon around a little bit to get it so that the bottom was level because I want that butter and brown sugar thickness to be about the same. So with the brown sugar all combined, the butter melted nicely, we're going to come in and we're going to place our apple circles. And you can see with those big circles, I had more than enough apple prepared uh, for that. So I could have gone lighter. I probably could have made it with one apple. It's always great to have a little extra apple. So I'll give the remainder of this apple a nice chop. So now we're going to take our maraschino cherries and put them right in the center of each of the apple circles. So with our maraschino cherries inside each one of those apple circles, we'll now take some of these extra apples that we chopped up, put it in our cake mix, and add it to the pot. So with those extra apples, and there may be too much, but is there any such thing as too many apples? And then apple upside down cake. Uh, we'll get this cake batter added to our Dutch oven on top of that sugary buttery mixture on the bottom with our apple circles and the maraschino cherries. Now what I'll do is just make sure that my cake mix is evenly spread on the top. Now I could have sprayed the sides with some of the Pam spray. You may have noticed I had it out, but honestly, there's so much butter that came up the side of that. There's no way that this cake is sticking to the sides of this Dutch oven. We'll take, put our lid back on. We're going to give it a slight little turn, make sure it's seated well. And uh, we'll bake up this cake and we'll see how long it takes. It should take about the same amount of time. Uh, that a cake in your oven would take, about 40, 45 minutes, uh, but we'll find out for sure and test it uh, and pull it out when it's done. To ensure even baking and to adjust for any problems if I'm quite not perfectly level, every 10 minutes early on and then every 15 minutes after, I'm going to take, I'm going to spin my lid, keeping pressure down on the lid about a third of a turn one direction and then I will come with my lid lifter and I lift up and I'll spin the Dutch oven about a third of a turn the other direction. Now as my cake bakes I'm going to want to keep an eye on the temperature and you've you know that I think that this is really a thermometer where I could come down and get a feel for how much heat and I see that I'm a little light on heat on the top. So I'm going to add some coals. I'm going to be very careful on the bottom of this because I don't want that cake to burn on the bottom, especially with all that sugar. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. I may add some coals as we go through. One of the things that I like about the ring method is that I can come in and I can visually see when my coals are burning down. And I can go around and I can nest in between some coals, some fresh briquettes to try to even out the heat and make sure that there's enough temperature to bake this cake. I'm going to try to have a majority of the baking 
happen from the top. Just like a regular pineapple upside down cake, we're gonna attempt to get this cake out in one piece. Well, scouts, we're about 40 minutes in and I can tell from the aroma coming off this Dutch oven that I'm pretty sure we're done. And I'm gonna take the lid off and we're gonna test and see if our cake is fully cooked. Oh, look at the steam coming off of that. I'm gonna take a paring knife. I'm gonna come in and it's coming out clean. You could use a whittled down stick. Uh, would work, a toothpick obviously. The other thing to look for is that the cake should be pulling away from the outer edges of the Dutch oven. And uh, what little bit was stuck there just peeled away. And I'm confident that when we flip this out, it's gonna work, because that's what's next, uh, because that just slid around nicely in there. So I'm a little more relaxed now. Uh, to be able to flip this out, we're gonna flip it out of the Dutch oven onto our lid. We're gonna put the lid back on the Dutch oven. And of course, we'll wanna have all the charcoal uh, ash and briquettes off of that. So I'm going to take, bring my Dutch oven lid over to my fire pit and safely dispose of the ash and charcoal that's on there. Now I have a calm day with a breeze. Had I been doing this on a day where it was windy, I just want to make sure that none of that ash is going to end up in my delicious cake here. So I may have to move that out of the way if it was a windy day, but I should be fine today. I'll also use this brush to be able to get some of the residual ash off of my lid. So now I've got the ash removed from my lid. I'm gonna put it back on and the moment of truth is gonna come where we're gonna take this Dutch oven, flip it over, take our lid stand, put it upside down and let's see if we truly have an apple upside down cake. So scouts, uh, Scout is both reverent, so this would be a great time to say a little prayer for me, and prepared as well. So we will have a spatula ready just in case one of those apples wants to stick to the bottom of that Dutch oven. Let's go and get our apple upside down cake ready for its uh, photo shoot here and hope that it all comes out in one piece. So what we want to do is have our Dutch oven gloves on. Going to come up. I've got my lid stand upside down. And now I'm just going to simply take my Dutch oven, and flip it over, put it on top of my lid stand. Now I purposely did that so that the loop on the top of the lid would not come in contact with the center of the lid stand. All right, here's the moment of truth. Wow. Now it did shift a little bit. No big deal. Just move those <laughs> circles of apple right over back into their place. Great thing is those maraschino cherries are showing me right where they should go. But I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to eating this cake. So here we have a apple upside down cake a little photo shot here for the the cameras made in a 12 inch regular dutch oven using a nice big round apple with some maraschino cherries a store-bought cake mix instead of water we used fresh cider and then with that extra bit of apples probably a little bit too much extra bit of apples we mixed that in the cake batter and we baked it inside of our Dutch oven, flipped it out, and here we have an apple upside down cake. So I hope this has inspired you to go out in the woods, out by the campfire with your fellow scouts, have some fun cooking outdoors, expand your cooking experience, and try new and different things as you go camping and have fun with your friends.